Our scripture lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, verses 6 through 10 out of chapter 2. Hear now the word of the Lord. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to live in obedience to him. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him, so you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done. Don't let anyone lead you astray with empty philosophy and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from evil powers of this world and not from Christ. For in Christ, the fullness of God lives in a human body and you are complete through your union with Christ. He is the Lord over every ruler and authority in the universe. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Over 20 years ago, when I was fairly newly living in my current house, uh, my husband at the time and I decided to plant two palmetto trees on either side of our front steps. So we went to the nursery and picked them out and had them delivered. And then we, well actually before the truck got there, we dug big deep holes. We filled it with fertilizer, used good topsoil, put those trees in there, and then watered them religiously until they took hold. Those trees are now over 20 years old. They have grown far taller than I thought. In fact, they're starting to obscure the view from my second story windows. But they are rooted strong and deep in my front yard. In those 20 years, they have survived droughts. They've survived great flood of 2015. They've survived ice storms, snow, and anything else that seemed to happen over those two decades. And they have survived all that because they have a good root system. They are firmly rooted into those spots and they can get what they need from the soil so that they can survive almost anything, good or bad. It's their roots that hold them in place and make them stable as well as providing the nutrients they need. We are like those palmetto trees. We have roots. We have roots in our family, in our community, probably even in our workplace. All these roots provide stability and help us grow because they link us to others and provide us with nourishment, the love and support we need to thrive. However, the most important roots we have, the most important roots we sink into the ground are the roots the Apostle Paul talked about, the roots we have in Jesus Christ. When we love Jesus Christ, we put our roots into divine soil, which gives our souls sustenance. The more we get to know Jesus, the closer we grow to the divine, the deeper our roots grow, and the more we grow in our faith. So every time we read the Bible, every time we come to worship, every time we go to Sunday school or some other small group, even every time we just talk about our faith or what we heard at church, our roots get stronger and deeper because we are strengthening our relationship 
with the Lord. And these deep roots allow us to draw our nourishment from Christ and give us the ability to stand strong and remain grounded during the destabilizing storms of life. Thus, we need to prioritize our relationship with Christ because our connection to the Lord enables us to hold on to our faith during hard times and gives us the strength we won't have by ourselves. We live in a crazy world, and we don't know what's coming next. But we can prepare ourselves for an uncertain future by having good, deep roots in Christ. Now, Paul, in this letter, warns the believers in that church to watch out for other beliefs and philosophies that compete with God's truth for our attention and our allegiance. They are false because they are of human origin and focus on power or control, not on love. Paul warns that these philosophies take us away, lure us away many times from God's truth and keep us from being fully rooted in Christ. Now there are lots of things that compete for our allegiance, but I'm only gonna mention two of them this morning because to me, they're the most treacherous ones. First, there's the idea that we should each just do what's best for us. That if it's good for me, it shouldn't matter to you, and you shouldn't try to stop me in whatever I'm doing. That, my friends, is false teaching. It isn't biblical. God prioritizes relationship. We see this in the Trinity, where God is in relationship with God's self. In addition, God created us to be in relationship with the divine and also with each other. When we try to go it alone, we are operating counter to God's will for us and for the world. So these ideas that try to separate each of us into independent beings with no need for anyone else are not of God and are actually detrimental to us. As Reverend Becky said a few weeks ago, we are all interdependent. We are all linked. And we need to recognize that and live in to that truth. Another false ideology that is even more insidious because is, is even more insidious because it misuses the Bible and twists God's words. It purports to be religious and pious, but it's not. The people who avows, who espouse these views lift passages out of the Bible, taking them out of context and using them to push a human agenda. We have seen these actions in the past with people using scripture passages to prove that God condones slavery. We are seeing people doing the same thing today to justify their own agendas. They claim to want certain policies because that is what God would want. However, what they are doing isn't pious or faithful. It's about gaining power and control. These people use scripture to portray God as vengeful, judgmental, and punitive. My friends, yes, there are passages in the Bible that sound like that, uh, but they are by no means the sum of what is in the Bible. The Bible is really a love letter from God to humanity. And the Bible's overall message is one of love, grace, and mercy. That's the most complete and accurate view of God we have. But don't just take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourselves. You will find that our best representation of the word of God is the person of Jesus Christ. 
It's not the words in this book. As the Gospel of John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. God became incarnate in Jesus Christ, willingly humbling God's self, because God wanted us to truly see and understand the extent of divine love and to see what God's heart is about, what God cares about. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who came to show us that. And so when we want to know what God really thinks and does, we can read the Gospels and see what Jesus said and how Jesus acted. So when people cherry pick verses out of the Bible to show divine favor for one cause or another, we need to compare what they are saying about God to what Jesus Christ said and did while he lived. If the words of people are in opposition to what Jesus said and how Jesus lived, then they are not Christ-like and they are not the truth. My friends, we need to be rooted and firmly attached to Jesus Christ so that we are, when we are confronted by these false and misleading beliefs, we recognize that they are not true. Let us be nourished by the truth of Christ, which assures us that God loves us and all of humanity and that God wants a relationship with each of us. Being able to recognize God's truth and not be misled by false beliefs is why it's so important to read and study the Bible and to have safe places where we can delve into what we've read and really begin to internalize those ideas. It's how we get to know God and how we sink our roots into the soil of God's love. Friends, what I want for all of us is to have the type of relationship with the Lord where our roots go down deep, so deep that nothing, not the approach of death, not the diagnosis of cancer, not the loss of a job, nothing can destroy our relationship with the Lord. When we've got that type of relationship with God, we are able to withstand anything that comes our way because we know that God will be with us as we go through it. I am blessed to have had people in my family that modeled this type of relationship with God to me in my formative years. And I am blessed currently with friends and with members of this congregation who model that type of faith for me now. Y'all live it out. And I want this type of vital relationship with the Lord for everybody because it changes your life and allows you to live from a place of peace and security, even when the world is not peaceful or secure. Because we know that we are loved by God and that God is with us no matter what. When we have deep roots in Christ, we will want to love others because we are so thankful for the love that God lavishes on us. This love becomes not just a feeling, but an action. As we move from intellectually knowing about God to having a relationship with God, we will live differently. We will respond to God's love with a love of our own. We will love God, we will love ourselves, and we will love our neighbor which includes everybody else. When we do that, 
We are acting like Jesus. We are being Christ-like. And as we begin acting more Christ-like, we will begin to see, even if it's dim and fuzzy, a bit of heaven here on earth. This is what being rooted in Christ does for us. It changes us and it changes the world. That's no less important today than it was in Paul's day. In a world where nothing is certain and there are new crises to face every day, having deep roots in Christ nourishes us and stabilizes us and allows us to stand tall and strong and live out our lives from a place of love and inclusion. Thanks be to God.